This is me, riding on my vintage cafe racer, and this is 3D printed. There's more, but we have to wind back a couple of weeks, when it all started in this old shed. <laughs> I'm going to 3D print functional parts for it. Some of you are probably thinking, oh please god no, I'm not going to 3D print wheels for this thing. But I want to make this bike more practical. First of all, it's missing the indicator lights. And I really do not like sticking my limbs out when I want to make a turn, especially when it's dark. And second of all, it's impossible to bring anything with me unless I wear a backpack. I bought these classic looking long ride saddlebags, which I reckon would look awesome on that bike. But we have to find a way to mount this on there and well motorcycle parts are very hard to get and extremely expensive oh my fooling this is not about motorcycle parts being expensive in my previous video i have shown this system which i want to turn into a ecosystem and i think it would be interesting and awesome to actually apply this system for, for this bike and see if we can mount saddlebags on there. I'm not going to 3D print it out of this fluor green PLA, but out of Luvacom nylon with carbon fiber from 3D for makers. And this is the strongest, toughest material that I am able to print. And I've printed that on the Optimus P1 using the E3D Revo Hemera XS with a Revo adapter so I could mount a drop effect ring heater and use a Bontec 1mm CHT nozzle and these parts they are incredibly tough and especially very stiff and to make it stronger I've nailed them so I had to buy an oven oven it also makes it possible to uh, keep it constantly under tension without creep I also printed this indicator light out of resin which fits on the end of this frame and the idea is to make a frame like this mount this to the front of the bike with two of these indicator lights and then we are going to make the rest for these saddlebags and that will be the um, well the more uh, challenging part of this story okay let's start off easy with the indicator lights on the front we need five of these standard segments and two well, custom segments these are mounted to the fork on the front of the bike. This is not held together, well sort of held together with these brass tubes, but it's not tensioned with this, but I will show you that later. Still the tube doesn't fit perfectly in there because this is printed with that one millimeter nozzle. There are some irregularities in here. So I've printed this. Uh, it also has a mounting option here, so you can mount a, a diamond or this uh, a file, a four millimeter chainsaw file, which we can use to file this and make this smooth so these brass tubes fit in there perfectly. Everything was a bit of a tight fit, maybe a bit too tight because the first segment broke. This meant that I had to file down a lot more. Well, everything seems to fit now. Okay. Okay, I think I came up with an interesting way of tensioning this. With this design, it's tensioned with these three threaded rods. But these rods aren't tensioned, but it's tensioned from the center. And I'm using this aramid fiber, which is very easy to work with and to put it in there. And the idea is that there is one part, one side that's rotating and the other side is just stationary. And with this tool, I can just make this tool with this, uh, this is core from standard electrical wire. Now I should be able to start twisting 
And the nice thing about aramid fiber or Kevlar is that this is extremely strong. So this should well tension it quite a bit. <laughs> it's already uh, okay. Just a uh, precaution. Wow, yeah, how far are we going to stretch it? What? <laughs> Fuck me, no! <laughs> Shit! Uh, okay, well... Oh, good. It is tensioning, so that's the good news. The bad news is that I destroyed my tensioning system. I did it make a replacement part. What for domme? I decided to take the bike apart first. I had to remove quite a lot in order to get to the electronics, even the gas tank. I had to figure out how the wiring system worked. The man I bought it from said that the wiring for the indicator lights was partly done. The switch was already there. After I found the right wire, the lights turned on, but didn't blink. I thought that it needed to draw more power, or that the relay itself was broken. Then I found out that these relays do have a polarity, and yes, that was it. I had to dig further into the wiring harness to find the connections for the back. Some continuity check. I dug more to find a decent ground connection, which, well... I ended up redoing most of the ground connections. Yes, I know that this is not the right tool for it. I prepared the rest of the harness to make it work for the indicator lights. I reprinted the tensioning system that was destroyed earlier and this time added nails which aren't going to break. I added them on both sides and cut them to length. Now I can really tension it. I mounted the assembly to the front and now it's time to assemble the indicator lights. Okay, I'm very pleased with how this looks, but this is still the beginning. We still have to make the saddleback holders and we are also going to add these indicator lights on there. They, they, these are a bit more orange than the ones that I've shown a bit earlier. And that's because I added some orange dye, well, maybe a, a bit too much, it was more like egg yolk. So, I want them to be orange but more transparent so I'm going to reprint them and that's the perfect moment to talk about today's sponsor Anycubic with their Anycubic Photon Mono M5S. It starts up with a self-check where it quickly detects and troubleshoots hardware problems. The VAT has a special release film, the ACF release film, which lowers the release force of the printed part. This ensures a high success rate of your prints and it also makes it possible to print very fast. Especially when you use Anycubic's specially developed high-speed resin, you can reach print speeds up to 105 mm an hour. The new Photon Workshop works faster and it has an improved support algorithm. You can connect to the printer wirelessly or just a USB drive. You don't need to level the bed anymore because it has a leveling free system so you don't have to worry about a filled first layer. This printer has a full monitoring system throughout the printing process that can detect printing failures. This greatly reduces the waste of resin and time. And have I mentioned that this printer has a resolution of 12K? That's 11,520 by 5,120 pixels. That's a horizontal pixel size of 19 micrometers with high contrast ratio for crisp details. Check the link in the description for more information. 
While the new indicator lights were being printed, I started to design the rest. I took some photos earlier which I could use as reference. I eyeballed and measured where everything should go. And this turned out to be quite a challenging design. I made myself more comfortable, more comfortable, and ended up making an outdoor office. I continued engineering and designing the crap out of this thing. Do you know that situation where a designer designs something very nice and the engineer has to abide and somehow has to make things oh, work? A seamless zero button design. This makes it compares the charging port. Imagine the perfect apple hanging from the tree. Yes? Yes. Now imagine it with a charging port. But this needs power. How are we going to... You have to look through the obstacles in order to see the beauty that lies behind them. And now we are in the situation where we have to fix, well, this beautiful design. It has these beautiful round curves. Um, I wanted to make it straight, but this looks better. And I also think it's a fun challenge. Well, fun is maybe not the right word. It's a challenge to bend these brass tubes like this. These are modular vice jaws. Here are some magnets. And we can just add these modules. This is just a standard soft jaw uh, made for four millimeters. So I can, um, like this, it will do the job just fine. I think you can even use this for embossing. We can probably use it for bending the brass tubes. So I've got the uh, two counterparts and they will just go together like this. But let's see if we can bend some brass tubes in here. I added steel wire in here to prevent it from uh, collapsing and I marked the halfway point. Let's see what happens. Okay, goes nicely in here. So nicely in there, yes. And this is the smallest bend that requires more force. <laughs> Sounds like a single use part. And I think if I whack it with a hammer on this side, so just piece of wood. All right. Things crossed. Not as good as I hoped, but it's better than I expected. Okay, let's do it the other way around now. I used the template for the bends and had to do some manual adjustments. This started to hurt after a while though. I yanked out the steel wire, bent more tubes and put together the first part. curved segments didn't come out well because the filament wasn't dry enough. I found out that the oven has a spool drying function and in the meantime I decided to make the other profiles first <laughs> but this meant a lot of filing. Several hours of filing. Once this was done I put together the largest part. That seemed to fit. I mounted this to the frame with a custom segment. These segments are printed out of PLA so I could use this to see if everything fits well. The saddlebag fits and looks great. The saddle itself fits and the profile doesn't poke my leg. I put together the bottom part which fitted as well. Did some further checks and unfortunately not everything fits. Good thing I used PLA. I made notes of everything that had to be modified and that was two days ago. I redesigned the parts and started a new print and this time I printed everything out of nylon with carbon fiber. 
because I'm confident that this time the parts are correct. Um, it is a quite a long print and everything should be finished by now. So right now I'm taking the Mercedes for a spin to the studio and we will find out. <laughs> okay, putting together all the parts was even more difficult than I thought. Many times I needed glue and no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't get it to fit. So, I decided to ditch all the curved parts. Using only straight segments makes my life a lot easier. They say, if you cannot make it accurate enough, make it adjustable. So, I designed these adjustable corner pieces. I want to say special thanks to my Patreon supporters, especially these guys. Your support helps a lot with these projects. Okay, let's put the rest of this frame together. Definitely was a fun build and I'm happy with the result. I think it looks great on a bike. I used the leather straps and reinforced it to make it more secure because I'm not too happy with the mounting points at the back. This system needs to be further improved before I'm going to share the files publicly. In the meantime, I'm going to enjoy this beautiful weather. 